In this video, I want to break down everything you need to know about this heat mat that's necessary for installation. If you want a more general overview of the product, we have another video on that. So the first thing you want to do before you do anything is to check your system with a multimeter. So you set the multimeter to the 200 range and just check these wires from the mat and make sure the number on the multimeter matches the value given in the manual. Next, you want to prepare your floor for installation. So to do this, it's very simple. You just clean it from any dust and debris. And then, of course, double check your measurements to make sure you have the right amount of mat. Always round down your floor space area. For example, 28 square feet of floor will require 22 square foot of matting to avoid surplus matting. But if you find yourself short on matting, then concentrate the mat in heavily trafficked areas. And when placing the mat, don't worry if your floor is not completely square because you can shape this not like in any direction you want. You just basically have to cut into this right here and then you can change the direction and make turns. Just like you see in this picture, you can basically make any shape you want. And when you cut and reshape this, always ensure a minimum of two inches of space between the wires for optimum heat distribution. So you'll likely use multiple mats for one project because this is only a 10 square foot mat and you probably have a bigger area than that. So you never want to link two mats together ever but instead you have two options. The first option is to use a junction box to connect them. You just install the junction box at the base of your wall below the thermostat. And then you're gonna to wanna to run the cold tails from all the mats, no matter how many you have, into the box. And then you connect that junction box to the thermostat. The second way would be to just connect each heat mat to the thermostat in parallel. That would mean connecting every cold tail of each mat to the thermostat independently without connecting the actual cold tails. On the back of your thermostat, you're gonna see four wires, and it's definitely important to know the difference between each of these. So the top and bottom wires are black and white wires that are labeled load, if you can read that right there. And this means that these are the wires you connect to your circuit breaker box to supply the power. So these middle two wires right here attach to the corresponding wires on the cold tail. So once you run the cold tail from the mat through the electric box, you connect this middle white wire, which is labeled neutral, to the white wire on the mat. It's pretty simple. And then you take the black wire labeled line, and you connect that to the black wire on the mat. And this green wire is simply your, your ground wire that you're gonna connect to your electrical box. This is what your ground wire looks like in the electric box. You just connect your green wire to that. So next I'll show you how to connect the sensor to the thermostat. And obviously the sensor relays the temperature of the mat to the thermostat so that the thermostat can change the temperature of the mat. So it's very easy to place. You just want to lay it in a heat zone that's not touching any wires, but it's also under the mat and right in between the wires. So a place just like this. And then I'll show you how to connect it to the thermostat. To connect the sensor to the thermostat, you're gonna to have to open the back and it actually comes with this nice little screwdriver, so it makes it very easy. So what you're gonna unscrew is this little bottom screw right here, just to pop the cover off. Comes off very easily. And then this is what you're gonna pay attention to for installing the sensor. You wanna snake the two wires through these little two holes right here. It's made perfectly easy. And then on the other side, you have little ports that say floor sensor, and it's three and four. So you unscrew these two screws that correspond with the floor sensor. Make sure you do this, because a lot of times people mess this up and they get an error message, and this is the most frequent problem. So once you unscrew those, then you can insert the, the wires into the ports. It's very small, so it's, it's, you need a delicate hand. But once you do that, they're in and then you just tighten it. It's pretty simple. So now they're in. They don't come out. So there's a full description of every function of this thermostat in the manual, but I want to give you just a quick overview right here. So you open it like this, and first of all, you have the arrows right here, which are for temperature, obviously. So this briefcase button right here puts it into vacation mode. The moon button is called the economy button and it's for energy saving. And the sun button is for warming your system when you're home. 
The left side of the thermostat is pretty straightforward. It controls the time and the calendar settings. And this big white button in the middle is simply for turning the backlight on and off. So if this were on right now, I could show you that it just lights the back of the screen up. So I just want to show you a couple of the program functions on the back of the thermostat. There's three switches right here in the lower corner that are pretty important. If you flip any of the switches in this direction, like that, you switch from this mode to this mode. And if you switch back, it's from these modes to, this, to these modes. And the first switch is for switching from Celsius and a 24 hour clock to a Fahrenheit settings and a 12 hour clock. So if it's on the left, you're gonna view everything in Fahrenheit and with a 12 hour clock, like in the United States. But if you're in Canada, you switch it this way and it'll be Celsius and a 24 hour clock. And this next switch right here is currently on ES on and I just switch it to ES off. And the middle switch, basically ES stands for early start, which is a great function to use. And if early start is on, you set your mat to be warm at 8 a.m., for example, and the system will figure out when it needs to turn on in order to be warm at 8 a.m. So maybe the system is large and needs to start heating up at 7 a.m. to be programmed at the temperature that you set for 8 a.m. So that's what early start is, and I would suggest using that. So the third switch is AF and F mode. It's currently in AF mode, but F mode is what you should use because this is floor mode. AF mode is simply ambient floor mode. In AF mode, uh, you'd be setting the temperature of the room instead of the floor. So make sure that you're in F mode because if you're in this mode, you would set the temperature of your floor based on your room temperature, which is not really what you want. So hopefully now you know enough about this to install it correctly. And if you get to the point where you install this and you cover it with your floor and everything, just make sure that your any adhesive you used or screed you used is completely dry before you turn on the actual mat. So if anyone's actually installed one of these heat mats in the past, uh, I'd like to know your experience with it. If you liked it, if you hated it, maybe you have some interesting installation tips that you'd like to share with other people. So let us know in the comments section below because a lot of people like to interact there, maybe learn from other people. So please do that and like the video if you liked it.